of it. The Voyage Home, an escapade mighty akin to a varnished wonder tale. By my troth, tis a spectacular show, teeming with miracles and humpback whales. Huzzah for such a true marvel, delightful as a jamboree under the summer moonshine. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I edited Mark Twain's instructions a little bit. I took out the part about the Mississippi, and I added in an intense <laughs> love for whales. Oh, of course. <laughs> Whales are important. I also swapped out the um, the count of awaiting members who have died. I replaced it with whale breaches. So every time a whale breaches surface... At Ryan's edits, what did you do today? I, I talked about whales, dude. That's what I did today. Whales. It's yeah. not whales. <laughs> it's the best movie. One of my favorite movies overall, honestly. So they are really magnificent creatures. Yeah, every time a whale breaches the surface, we have to increment the counter. It probably won't happen until like the halfway point of the movie, at least. But keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for whales. Um, other important at things. At Ryan edits W H Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y Y. The text of speech doesn't like that. Anyway. So, let's see. Thursday, Discovery Season 5 premieres, so that's coming up this week. Yes. Oh, fun. It is the final season of Discovery, unfortunately, but, you know, we've yeah. got Strange New Worlds. I put this as my number for Trek movie. What's the yeah, other one? Next year. Lower Decks. Yep, and uh, Forty is also coming out later in the year. We also have a few holidays today, or if you're in France, Prodigy is already out. But we have a few holidays today as well. It is Ewan McGregor's birthday, so happy birthday, Master Kenobi. Yep. <laughs> nice. It is also Caesar Jimmy Chavez Kenobi. Day, so Caesar is great giving me a day off work tomorrow. Thanks, Caesar. Caesar <laughs> Chavez, you if you don't know, was a, he, he was a civil rights and uh, labor rights activist, and also he was big on animal rights. He would love this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> It is also the International Day of Trans Visibility. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So that's great. And that's it. That's all that's happening today. <laughs> it's also Whale Day. Yeah, that, that thing, that other At thing Ryan last edits, week. it does. We had Spock to resurrect last week. Yeah, our favorite character came back to life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Beta's not even in these movies. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Look, I know it's a controversial opinion, but I don't even think Spock is the best Vulcan. I think Tuvok's the best Vulcan. Hmm. No, I guess. I like Spock. Spock. I just like Tuvok. It's very defensible. Tuvok's awesome. DVD is loaded and ready to go. Probably that was. Oh, he yeah. got no net finished by Picard. If, yeah. But that's fine. Data <laughs> also does net, net finches. So at Ryan I don't know edits, frog how face, many frog versions. face, frog face, frog face, frog face, no, frog no, no, face, frog no, no, face, no, no. frog I'm face. Putting, no, I'm putting the kibosh on multi emojis. The Texas beach doesn't like it. <laughs> um, so my version of the movie is one hour, fifty eight minutes, and fifty one seconds. I don't know how many versions there are, but that's what mine is. One hour, fifty eight minutes, fifty one seconds. Um, have you been to uh, multiple versions? It's almost time to press play too, right? Yes, forty seconds. Have you? Uh, when's the last time you were to uh, um, see? See. At Ryan edits. Rabbit face. Koala. Pig nose. Speak. No evil. Monkey. Baby. Chick. Bird. Black. Large. Square. Bird. Black. Large. Square. Bird. Black. Large. Square. <laughs> <laughs> that that was funny once. Uh, yeah. Found the um, loophole. I mean, in 1993, my family, we took a, tr a train to Niagara Falls, and then not far from there, there's a Sea World kind of thing, and we saw killer whales and dolphins. Nice. Nice. 
what else is nice is that everyone's going to press play in five, four, creatures. three, two, one, play. They're basically high school bullies. The cast and crew uh, of Star Trek wish to dedicate this Opens. film to the men and women of the spaceship Challenger, whose courageous spirit will live for the third century and beyond. Oh, uh, this is just not really whale related. But... At Ryan well. edits pig nose, pig nose, pig nose. No, uh, 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 why, why, it's funny uh, the first uh, time. Not again. Mm. Wow. Someone, someone really went for it. Um. Is this Indiana Jones? Oh boy. Are we learning that Ryan doesn't have a mute on these? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He has to mute himself, so <laughs> that means we could sing oh. or... Uh, I will note this movie has... Hey, it's <laughs> mute us! <laughs> we can't, yeah. Uh... No, I don't think we're muted, I think just he's muted. So, no, uh, this he movie has... Had... The, he still has the power to mute us, so that doesn't... Yeah. We can't get what we're saying just because he's you. muted. Yeah. This movie has yeah. the same beginning as the motion picture, and there's a giant probe attempting to come towards Earth and no one can stop it. Yeah. 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 But we start with a court martial of our heroes. It, for... it, it is basically the same intro because not only that, it also disables all the systems and everything just for good measure. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, so that's, that's, what's going over. That's, that's what's going on, yeah. Although it's really interesting though, because with the whale noises, we don't know what the hell they are at first. So like, is that a mechanical thing or? I just like how it goes wub wub wub. <laughs> this, this is the Deep Space Nine found, right? I Commander Chapel. Maybe. In the credit in the credits? Admiral Cartwright is in this movie. So this guy, John Chuck, he's also the Cleon ambassador in Star Trek Six. Just he puts on like twenty pounds, but uh it's I didn't realize that until just now. Also I found the mute text to speech button. I didn't know where it was before. I found it. <laughs> ah, good. Um. Also, I think the the movie everybody loves in this uh, the scene everybody loves in this movie is on Spock. This is a Nerf test of the, the mute TDS. Okay, it didn't work. I mean, you know, like, the, no, 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 the, no, no, please, in Picard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but you know, here's the thing, though, right? Back then, so uh, jukeboxes or whatever they were called, boomboxes, boom they were kind of yeah. new, and you need to have like 10D batteries, which are like the heaviest kind, and you need to have like a whole, like at least six of those, and then they would last you like half the day. So the rest of the half of the day, you would just carry around uh, a boombox that didn't work. But mm -hmm. it was the coolest thing. It was it was super cool. I don't know if you, I mean, you, weren't, you guys weren't around for those I, days, but I was. The days. Okay. Okay. yourself. So, so, so here we go. It's the thing from the the lower decks intro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. It's, it is in the intro. Yeah, as it of, was it last the, season or this season when yeah. they added it? The most recent yeah. season, whatever that was. Also, we have now established that the TOS ending is not canon because here's a woman captain. Yep. Oh no, yeah, that's true. The first one to ever appear. I don't think she has a name. She's just the captain. I don't of the think we ever learn the the origin of this probe. We just know it exists. Yes, it went to a different whale planet or something. I don't know. By the way, the Saratoga Cisco ship in uh, the first episode of D Space Nine. Yeah. Um, I'd also stretch his military. Uh, code in for communication. So to get out, not over and out. Ah, <laughs> uh, more saving money. But they somehow have footage of from a ship that was actually yeah, going. Oh, yeah. Where did this view come from? No. So this is. They have military drones uh, in space at all times for this to work. Or are they, they, they dramatize it, right? It's like a... Possibly. But like, you know, in documentaries. It's a recreation. 
Um, you guys ruined her. <laughs> yeah, so this is the this is the um, same ambassador from Star Trek. Say the Chancellor of the High Council is dead. Oh, He's always making the uh, what and what, what I really like is so this is what Yes, that's what I was going to say. This scene is really amazing because yeah. you see all kinds of aliens that form the Federation that we actually don't see in anywhere else in Star Trek. Um, you even see a cat alien that's represented as part of the Federation in those seats, bleachers. At Ryan edits baby chick bird penguin monkey monkey. I mean, the cat alien is, is, is uh, established by the, the animated series. Animated series, right? Yeah. That's correct. And of course, correct. and then of course, correct. lower decks. Yeah. 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 Fine. Um, and of course, our heroes are still on Vulcan, so they're not here for yeah. the uh, court martial. But um, Kirk broke like 10 laws over here. We deny nothing. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're Klingons, dude. That's that's their whole thing. <laughs> Murder is their relate. Wait, are those? What are these in the back? Are those like bonobos or something? Assuming androids. They still got that Star Wars envy. A little bit. I mean, they put good money into the set. It's huge. I feel like it's the wreck deck from uh, the the ship. Starfleet regulations. Yeah, this guy totally is a great I mean, overacting. Klingons make for some good overacting, yeah. The, the Federation has no death penalty, so that's Sometimes. not going to work. Officially, you, you, no death you penalty. You ask for what you want, not what you can get, right? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, even the Klingons well, don't kill him. When they finally get him. Hmm. I mean, it's that, is, that is a quite nice use of a map painting. Because the yeah, entire thing is map painting, nothing that ramp. Mmm, very interesting. Yeah, no, they show Vulcan is very beautiful in these movies. Um, and <laughs> I like these Vulcan hats. Like, it's almost Romulan very, in a future movie. Pointy. Very feathery. They look a little too. bit like Christmas elves. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They have a point on them. I thought they were feathery. Um, a lot of money into production value. Okay, did, we, did they establish how her got here? What was that? Because we were wondering at that last. Did they establish how or her I got here? Because we were wondering she, yeah. that last movie. Yeah, yeah, she came here with Sarek. Okay. And then Sarek dropped her off and then went back to Earth for the yeah. trial. Presumably. Sarek's is always ferrying back to forth between Earth and Vulcan. This film does kind of his job. Much. Time so. is as much of an issue in this film, but. My big drive Why with this in Mexico? Torrent Trek itself, and Torrent <laughs> sci-fi at the moment, is the complete lack of time in between locations, or time to travel between locations. Oh, yeah. It's to the point of story, but like, yeah. other aspects that, of most yeah. Star Trek have established very clearly that it takes this length of time to get to this position. Yeah. You need to yeah, like... on the fringes of Federation space. Let's just go to Earth for a day trip. Yeah. Yeah. It is frustrating. All right, so this what? film came out what is the SP velocity and then they did swallow? Yeah. African-American. Uh, motion picture was 79. Star Trek 2 was 82. Star Trek 3 was 84. And this one is 86. Oh, Leonard Nimoy directed... Into Gravitons? Well, that's... Yeah, that's how That's gravity idea. plating works. Bro, gravitons are actually uh, a yes. theorized particle. I mean, yeah. Anti-gravitons, though? How do you feel? The you but feel? no, gravity gravitons can't, can't exist. We've now proven that since Wait, that time. On. Mark Twain, how do you feel? 
<laughs> All right. He needs to think about it for a second, but he's going to think about it. I do not understand the question, mother. Um, so I really lark, like my good sir, as gay as a lark, especially when one <laughs> ponders the vast ocean brimming with whales or the infinite cosmos of Star Trek. Tis a rare treat. Oh, Very man. Very good. Yeah. The I vast agree. ocean I agree. brimming with whales. So many whales. Mm, whales. For love. Is he a valid witness? He was dead for most of this. Yeah. He was away, but in a very weird mind state. Is this Amanda's last appearance? Other than Discovery. Not sure. I think after this, she's dead. And we replace her with another lady. TNG. She's definitely dead by TNG. TNG, we had Perrin. Also, what does that do? Is that, is that an alien? Who is that guy? He's not some sort of ridge, so very possibly. I don't know if he has a ridge or if he's just old. <laughs> Maybe he's one of those TOS era Klingons. Old alien. Look, the whales just want to talk, man. It's not their fault your ship is trash. <laughs> it's not your fault you have no idea what they're saying. Miranda class. They did get kind of sketchily close to it. I don't know if you want to... Oh, hey, Brock. Cisco's dad famously going to do, well, he's going to try to make the Federation great again in Star Trek Six. Is what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get to that. By whale power, Sister Ship of the Enterprise. At least it should be the sister ship, sister ship of the original Enterprise. Dude, come on, look into the camera. Everything we have, what does what that constitute exactly, Mr. Cisco? Do we want to know more about the whale probe, or are we happy to just have it be this enigmatic thing that flies off? I don't, I don't know how is. good they can make it, really. Like, yeah. I think it's mystery like, is probably be just like there's a the whale best uh, policy it. here. It's a cetacean observation crew. They're, relate they're ancestors, or they're related. Oh, this set is very important. They, so they must have, when they made Cetacean Ops, they must have intended to connect that back to this in some fashion, right? Probably just. Probably. Never. Well, it was. It wasn't to do with that without it being too silly. They just. They just never did use it. Right. Evening all. They never got around to figuring out how to make it. Yeah. Not incredibly silly. <laughs> True. They did they work out that something. they couldn't fit a whole humpback whale in the ship, so they they did replace. With just dolphins. <laughs> yeah. 
Did he die brave? Well, no, he tried to fight the Klingon. No, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, he didn't really save anyone. Someone was going to get executed. Well, he, was, he tried to save someone. And that worst, make it himself, he died. May your journey be free of incident. I don't know if that would really work well as a thing to say on Earth. Like, it's, it's a little bit too weirdly specific. Okay, bye, Spock. <laughs> drive safe. Love you. Yeah. Like, it's, it's sort of like if you said, don't get into an accident rather than drive safe, right? Like, the fear on the Savic doesn't go because she's pregnant. That's weird. A on her home planet at the moment, so she's probably taking a vacation. He's been alive for like a whole two weeks, Bones. He's fine. Three months. Three months, Jesus. Good evening. And here we have the titular voyage home. Yes. Do we ever reuse the um, the bounty interior sh sets? The novelization doesn't mention that, though. Because they, they put a lot of effort into this. Yeah. They didn't put as much effort in into comping those people into the matte painting, but the sets... Hmm. Space dock. Where where's this thing? Didn't they launch everything they have? No, they hadn't gone to that yet. All right. Maybe you should have launched your vessels before that. Excelsior once again being useless. <laughs> it never actually does anything in any of the films until it becomes Enterprise B. And then even then it gets just blown to scraps in generations. Hello, any whales here? Well, it does help home? out in Star Trek VI. Does it? In oh, yeah. Sulu captains it, doesn't he? Yes. I don't remember what it does. I just remember Sulu yelling, fly her apart. In the novel, they try to launch the Excelsior, but it loses power B for leaving Doc. Sure does. It helped destroy Charm's bird of prey. Oh, okay. Why did you wish to fill my shoes, Doctor? <laughs> So Spock, what was it like being dead? Did you go? Did you see the Black Mountain? Did you see Any the koalas? space whale? Uh, the koala, space koala. Well, I mean, bones. Actually, a lot of people have gone there. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I'm on Spock's side here. He's busy, man. He's doing his job. That's literally just sped up for of the night sky. 
Now, Deutschland, you survived. Oh, never mind. He's dead again. (laughs) Who is this? Is this Paris? Leningrad? No, 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 no. We got rid of we got rid of Leningrad. That's not a place anymore. <laughs> it's called Saint Petersburg. We don't have Stalingrad either. Oh, Major Barrett. She's Commander Chapel now. As noted by the credits. Um, why? Why is a nurse in planetary operations? What? What's she doing here? I, I think I guess um, she swapped career tracks in the last few years. You know, our in our in our Western like um, culture, it's kind of easy to well. I mean, imagine that um, you know how cruel could it be for killing the whales. But every year in Japan, there's like a whale hunt. But also people mm. in the Faroe Islands, which is north of England, like between England and Iceland, and people of Iceland, they really enjoy a whale hunt every year. Um, they enjoy like slaughtering it and everything comes out. It's pretty brutal. But the fact that whales speak, it shows they're like intelligent animals and it's kind of cruel to just like slice them open. But it's a cultural thing. The Japanese will never give up their whaling hunt rights, and so will the Iceland, Icelic people. Um, Did you just say Icelic? I don't know what's the... Isn't that what they do? Uh, Icelandic. 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 Yeah, I know, but I had an English teacher who said Icelic, and I think she made that up. (laughs) That's... uh, I, I fear for what else the English teacher might have taught you. Avoid the planet Earth at all costs. Yeah, Kirk, just turn around. Just leave. Go back to Vulcan. <laughs> I like how it's the helm officer for the for the Saratoga that blew up was a Grazerite, and then Star Trek VI, the president is a Grazerite. They basically look like a goat with the long whiskers. Does he look like a goat? I couldn't even tell if he was supposed to be an alien. No, this is this president was human. Um, no, the the but the oh, yeah, that dude, the helm. Yeah. He no, it, like the Saratoga was destroyed though. The 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 Saratoga was destroyed by the probe, um, like a few minutes ago when I was away. I don't think it was destroyed. It just lost power and sort of drifted off to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. It was like spinning out of control. Yeah, spinning in in its own gravity. See, Spock gets it. It just wants to hang out. The president of D6 idea... was played by Kitwood Smith, the dad in that 70s my, show. My guess at the moment, I don't, I don't remember if it's said exactly what the transmissions are, my guess at the moment is that the transmissions themselves are being boosted to try and get speech to the whales, but the whales don't exist, so it's boosting so hard that it's actually vaporizing the ocean. Oh, uh, the resonance. Something like that. It's just talking louder because it thinks the whales can't hear it. Yeah. That's all it's <laughs> oh, God. It's like American tourists. Yeah. It, look, if someone doesn't speak English, it wor- just speak English louder to them. That's how it works. <laughs> if your comms are being jammed and you can't communicate, just yell louder into the microphone. Makes me want to play Stellaris as an aquatic species. <laughs> so, um, I, although I had a good childhood experience, you know, with the uh, sea, sea Aquarium Park, um, the thing is, uh, in he about was also 2013... Clarence Bodica in Robocop. 
who you are being a DJ. In 2013 or so, uh, a film came out called Blackfish about, first of all, how the killer whale is kept in basically a closet, you know, at night. Um, so it, it had aggressive instincts. Um, it, it like drowned one of its keepers. So maybe we shouldn't keep sea creatures in captivity. And eventually now, like they're all released. So we've had a sea change between now and then. Who wouldn't send a probe to talk to a whale's bones? But have you <laughs> never heard of a whale? Have you seen a whale? Whales are awesome. Yahoo News, please bear with me and let me know what I'm doing. I had never used this before or been on a live chat on here. Yahoo News? What? Okay, so that here's was what really you do. <laughs> you load up your copy of Star Trek for the Voyage Home, and then you go to the timestamp that's on the video. And then you press play and you're good. And then you make sarcastic comments about the whole movie. Yeah, uh, that's crucial. And expound on your intense love for whales. And you make uh, historical asides till people tell you to shut up. There's a time limit on those, though. Yeah, you know what? I feel bad because, you know, originally... There was no time limit, and then Ryan put a five-minute time limit, and then he put a one-minute time limit, and now it's a <laughs> ten-second time limit. So I feel bad. It's only because of me that uh, you know we all have to. You know, this aside is definitely longer limit. than ten seconds. <laughs> About the historical um, nature of the time limit. <laughs> okay, so this movie also has time travel, which makes it one of the best movies ever. <laughs> time travel is pretty cool. I have to agree with you there. I do you know, like, like we don't get the time... ones where they go back and not even time travel, just talk to like primitive humans. And by primitive, I mean us because we suck. But yeah. like, I we really don't get time travel the, the Enterprise episode where they go to that Western planet with the, the Skagarans. That episode's great. No, no, no. But here, look, we get we get a perfectly scientific explanation for time travel. No, we don't. No, what we... are you talking about? They fly around the no. sun really fast. That's not how that works. Yeah. Um, and which is reused in Picard. But uh, whenever, we don't get time travel to whenever I hear anything about whales, the, Kirk's line immediately goes through my head. Whales, Mrs. God, whales. Uh, the next Star Trek film to do time travel is uh, uh, the First Contact. So, Not yeah, I mean, it's a formula. It's a winning formula. Are we going to destroy the Golden Gate Bridge? This had more realistic time travel. BBC News at 10. I like the Enterprise episode where they go back to Detroit for a few days, then come back 30 seconds after they left. Okay, you don't need to preface each comment with a news source. That was, that was a one-off thing. Enhance. You know, back in the day, I remember even um, trying to call India in like 1992. Like sometimes the line wouldn't go through because everything was landline back then. So, um, you know, this reception problem, it was a real thing. One of the cool things HDMI does, though, is that like it has uh, audio and video on the same track. Yes. So it's very unlikely that you'll have video but not have audio, which was like the number one headache back in the day. Honestly, why the even go back to the late the whale probe why was an go inside back to... job. Why not go back several thousand years 
when nobody <laughs> would possibly see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and they, they actually mentioned that in the film. Whales. They say the like, oceans would be brimming. Hold on, them. hold on. Are you asking why don't they go back to prehistoric times as opposed to the present day when they're filming the movie, which would be much exactly, cheaper? Yes. Why didn't they spend more money? <laughs> I think you know exactly why they went, they went back they in time movie. to the present day. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, also, even in our time, right, they could have taken any whale, but the idea is they wanted to take the whales that were um, the love story whales, you know? <laughs> it's a shame I about the bloopers dismiss... for this movie. They're really good, but they're absolutely abysmal quality. Yeah, I, I can't dismiss the event that's hovering over the chat window. Does everybody else have this? Is it because it's not like initiated by the event creator? Here, I'll I'll start the uh, event. I don't you. know. Yay! It's gone. <laughs> uh, Inferior stabilizers. Wouldn't Someone wouldn't at warp nine point six. Wouldn't wouldn't they have hit the sun already at this point? If they're going that fast. The whales really the whales. God, yes. I'm stuck on whales. The sun's really far away, dude. It's not that Their far visualizations away. Visualizations you can get where like even the Enterprise D going to warp no, nine point eight. It's just like at a crawl. <laughs> no, I've seen those, but not from Earth to the In sun. I mean, it's a short distance, man. Intraplanetary. Well, they weren't from. They weren't at Earth. I think they were like away from Earth a little bit. Um, they're if anywhere. If you're anywhere near it, warp nine point eight is going to get you there really fast. Yeah, not that fast. Okay, this. Okay, this is my favorite no Trek movie, but this part's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is from the good. Guardian of the Don't do that. that. Like I think. Remember we mentioned Star Trek Two was the first movie yeah, to have an animated sequence. sequence. So this CGI, is also CGI, CGI sequence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, CGI sequence. Thank you, Gene. Are you good? So, uh... <laughs> Gene didn't have anything to do with this. To be fair. Is Gene dead? No worries about it. No, he's not dead at this point, but he's he's not really involved in this. Okay. So, so Star Trek Picard makes it canon it that like you need, reason, yeah. you need a super genius intelligence to be able to do this like slingshot effect calculations. Yes. So only Spock and the Borg Queen fall in that Gene category. dies before Six release. Yeah, just before. He dies of a heart attack because he doesn't like Six. <laughs> Are you sure it's not because of all the cocaine? <laughs> like, I've not heard anything about Gene doing cocaine, but it seems like something he would do. It does. And he probably, he and... probably did all sorts of party drugs at his orgies. I wonder if he had people dressed up as, like, Ferengis and... Deltons and what, what, what assumes. Um, so put on these ears. <laughs> Maybe it was all the affairs. Uh, you gotta say it's really nice to have a non-Federation uh, starship for our heroes, because you get so bored of seeing the. There's like ten more movies, right? So it's all going to be on the Federation flagship. Uh, it, it, in in what's that TNG season one episode where Riker's on the the Klingon ship as an exchange program? Uh, that's a really nice one too to see. Like, all right, we get to change of scenery. Matter of honor. Thank you, chat. Not to be confused with code of honor. The most misunderstood episode of Star Trek ever. No, you're not allowed to defend they, they, Code of Honor in this channel. <laughs> they never really explained how you can actually hear whale song in space. They're bouncing. They're bouncing graviton waves off the surface of the ocean using the pylons of the bounty. <laughs>
And you know, I guess after this citation, Ops became canon. That's fine. If we if we land the Klingon ship on Earth and let Earth reverse engineer it, we could sp we could <laughs> skip so much development time. But we can't do that in the 24th century, Mr. Scott. They <laughs> recrystallized the dilithium inside the chamber. I mean, honestly, if Spock can figure this out, if I had a penny for every time a TNG season one episode title ended with "Of Honor," I'd have two pennies, which isn't a lot, mm. but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> they should totally be doing this in the twenty-third century. Hmm. None, none of this, none of this techno babble checks out. Don't worry about that. We're going to send the Russian guy to sneak into the naval base to, to steal <laughs> photons, high energy photons. Earth could be the inventor of Viking tech and bypass the, the Klingon Treaty. Well, yeah, they, they can't make photons. They have to gather them. I mean, this was the height of the Cold War, and actually the Chekhov character was put there for that reason, too. Like, maybe one day we'll have peace with the Russians and we'll have a united Earth. Maybe one well, obviously, day. Obviously, we've seen how well that worked out. There's been multiple attempts to bring Russia into the fold, and Russia does not want to now come into the We've fold. We've got <laughs> two hundred more years to get the, to get everyone to chill. Also, yeah. one thing it's easier Vulcan. to get people to stop going to war with each other after the entire planet has already been destroyed once. <laughs> so here's here's right. my question: What do you think happens once? Either Putin is deposed Actually, or you would he dies. Only have one penny. Someone else. Matter banned. of honor is a season like, two EP. Yeah, is it? Is it somebody worse? I wonder. Uh, it could. Uh, it could be probably someone not better. worse, we but but probably not much better. You know, so we brought it before. Um, are there replicators in the TOS movies? We, it's kind of ambiguous. I blame Discord. Spock says here, I forgot my uniform, and Kirk's like, okay. And that's why he's wearing this karate outfit. They can't replicate him one. I mean, they, they have food synthesizers. He, he, he. Yeah. But yeah. That's, and they were that's on Vulcan for different. three months. They could have found a uniform. And also, they left Savik they, behind, so they could have, like, recycled hers. They have, they have as much time as they need to get this done. They, they are going to travel through time. They yeah. have no limit into how long that this mission will take needs to take so ser seriously only Spock can do these calculations well what who's out of his mind is this dude he doesn't want to buy a toaster oven toaster ovens are awesome dude get a toaster toaster oven. ovens are the best but you know what he's right uh, so when I was living with my ex I bought a toaster oven for $70 and it was like the best toaster oven you could possibly get and now the same kind I of toaster Dana oven could. is like is like three hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred dollars. I'm like, are you kidding me? Because when we split up, she kept the toaster oven. And she doesn't use it. I kind of, I kind of want to just go get it. No, just. <laughs> I should have taken it with me when I left. Just taking it, she wouldn't have even noticed. So the the movie's comedic tone is great over here because um, how many people have alien encounters? And you're just like, all right, shut a up. A lot of you're people, not and they're anything. covering it up. Let's just <laughs> keep I, moving. I'm willing we... to bet that nobody, nobody ever living on Earth has ever met an alien. No, but all these, uh, you ask these garbage men who saw the bird of prey in the middle of the night. Like, I'm look, saying in real life. Know, if you don't know, I don't know. And we're just going to keep remember, moving. Everyone remember where we parked. So, uh... Movie. The comedy begins. One of the many quotable lines here. <laughs> yeah. My my ex my ex had this thing about she didn't want any type of like little kitchen appliances out on the counter. They, they all had to be. 
they all had to be put up in the cabinet when we weren't using them. And I was like, but I use the toaster oven every day. Don't, don't and I don't want to have here. to do that. <laughs> well, okay. that. So uh, I acknowledge and accept so, that your use of language will alter since our arrival in this century. <laughs> so there may be some more colorful metaphors. Ah, uh, the sound of the 80s. <laughs> I, that has to be a reference to the other film where it goes, I'm walking here. Well, I the the, the punchline is I picked a I picked a toaster oven that was too large to fit in any of our cabinets, so it couldn't get put away. Okay. Um. So, uh, yeah, it is very it is very taxi driver because they don't know how to navigate a big big city. But um, I love how you're how they have to get money because they don't even know what to do with it and how it is and how to get it. Yes, it's uh, first officially. Yes, that that, that is the, the premise of this falling scene, yes. Uh, Uhura does a fan dance and she gets some money. No. <laughs> no. But she did the fan dance for free. She could be getting so are, paid are for it. Are they actually Ryan. filming in San Francisco for this movie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The trolley and everything. Why, why would they? Why would they go anywhere else? It's literally outside the studio. They don't even. They don't need. It. It's literally right there. <laughs> is that a lot? No, I want to say like at, at the beginning, so the the pacing of this movie is really great because we took a while to like get a, a start. But that's the advantage of having a two-hour movie because otherwise, if it's like an episode, it has to be like uh, one thing leads to the other. But now we got to be acquainted with our characters. He's still calling him Admiral, which gives them away later. Because everyone um, gets ten dollars. Uh, yeah, I mean, with that much money, you could buy a house in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've got this. Also. Spock, that's not actually that difficult of a co of a computation. You're not impressing anybody. Yeah. Angle and distance. It's not that hard. Yeah. You know, there's a um, there's a uh, that aquatic probably institute. Probably one hundred dollars is today's money. In San Diego, that they keep the coral reef alive by putting in like hundreds of thousands of gallons of ocean water every day. And laying it out because they've never been able to successfully keep it in captivity before. So um, these ocean institutes do a lot of great science. So accounting hmm. for inflation, that is two hundred eighty like dollars bucks. today. Ten dollars in the eighties. No, one hundred eighty-two dollars today. The, the total amount that he got. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So when someone said ten dollars is like. A hundred dollars today. I was, or I was saying it was more like twenty five. Yeah, that's, which is, that's, which yeah, is, which is yeah. correct. <laughs> the sixties, maybe. My favorite the song 80s, is no. soon. Oh, so if a hundred is like two hundred and eighty, then yeah, was one yeah, is one hundred dollars today. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, sixties and seventies saw some serious inflation. Whistles, yes. Well Yay! Done, is this are they? Is this the same thing that they're just running into random ass people on the street, right? Yeah. Like these aren't actors. No, 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 no. They, Th these they are, are. They were instructed to not interact with them. Yeah. And okay. then this one then lady one went off the rails Christ. and did her own thing. And they went with it. So she she also was supposed to just keep yeah. walking. Oh. <laughs> Somebody said this. They actually then ended up having to dream her into the atmosphere field and pay her. The cops is thinking about arresting this Forever guy for right, being mate. a Russian. Hey, this guy. It's Wessels. that guy from Star Trek: Picard, yeah. season three. <laughs> season two, but yes. Oh, season two. Sorry. Same actor though. Yep. Um. I hope you brought your D batteries because they're not going to last all day. <laughs> Spock is killed him. At the same time, it's quite good. And everybody clapped. Yeah, sure, um... they did, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> you just happened to fall into the off button. I don't want to join the 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 toxic fandom. 
But I do dislike that uh, Discovery made cursing a thing in Vogue. Because the whole thing here is that, you know, like people talk so vulgar. And in the future, obviously, we don't use those uh, base instincts. Except they do, though. I mean, they do. Like, they, you know, there was always. They do. I mean, in... Kirk, I mean Kirk isn't a swearer. <laughs> we didn't see the. I mean, is totally a swear. Right? The only maybe, reason they don't swear in the show that much is because of censorship. Are... Yeah, yeah. In true, the movies, they true. swear all the time, yeah. and Picard swears when the, when he does it in a language the censors didn't yeah. understand. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Also, maybe she says the censors don't understand the twenty fourth century people swear again. Like, yeah, I don't know. There are lots of explanations. Language changes. This was a, a um, black era sort of thing, but it was a dark era. But it was also language is nicer. Plus, you know, the funny thing is, language is always going to be critical. People are expressive, you know. Old fart. <laughs> Hi, Jillian. Jillian, you have no impact on the timeline. You know, Wales, Miss Jillian um, Wales. She does have an impact because she saves Earth single handedly. There is no such thing as a fish, so that makes sense. <laughs> That's a great podcast right there. <laughs> Based on the line from QI. Do whales attack people? Now they do. Bro. They got sick of us. You know, another funny thing is that... <laughs> it's really hilarious that they just actually decided to attack human shipping. Yeah, because they, they can talk, yeah. so... Tell each you know, other it's funny, it's a so good we, idea. We assume in the biblical story that Noah was inside a whale, but it just says a big fish. So... Uh, Noah? Noah was in a whale? Jonah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pinocchio? Noah, Noah built the Is ark. that kid in the front, Peyton <laughs> yeah. Manning? Wait, did, did we see a whale breach in this video? No, we're seeing whales being cut open alive for, for purposes of... You, okay, you know something crazy, though? As bad as I feel... This is awful. Um, as bad as I feel, though, before we discovered oil, petroleum in the ground... Uh, this whale grease was our main source of like kerosene and stuff, so it actually powered whale oil. Stuff. Yeah, whale it oil powered... was used for transmission fluid up until like the seventies when they started synthesizing really? liquid wax esters out of vegetable <laughs> vegetables. Oh, yes, and the hamburger fat so, is still used in perfumes. It's you can't replace it. It's not so good. in the United Hunt States. Animals is the perfect descriptor of. The capitalist short-term days Mere, and long-term need. Where will need. be picked? Because Me you hunt an animal to an extinction. Wait, does that count as a breach if we just... We saw the whales back a tiny mere, bit. Mere, <laughs> possession, mere possession of ambergris in the United States is a, is a federal crime. And mm -hmm. ambergris, they do vomit it up. It does wash up on the shores. But just possessing it is a crime uh, because they don't want to encourage the yeah. whaling in general. Yeah. All right, but cool. It, cool. The hunting does show because if you kill all of them, you can no longer use that for profit profit in the future. But we've multiple times hunted creatures to extinction and then lost all the profit from the future. So it shows that short term games over long term investment is what capitalism is. Yeah, for sure. So here's um, a fun but it's fact amazing. about this movie: when it came out. Environmental groups got really mad at them for taking boats and cameras so close to whales, because you you don't do that. <laughs> Except they're, they're not real whales. whales. They're just really good animat. Not, what? Yeah. What's the word? Not animatronics. Really good animatronics. props. Yeah. Animatronics. Yeah. They're not real whales. They're animatronics. No way. They did an amazing job. Um, you guys ruin everything. <laughs> By talking about how good the prop work is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, true. I hate to break it to you, but none of this is real. <laughs> Notice Spock is missing. Oh, yeah, where did it? Where did, oh, yeah, you can oh, tell yeah, this yeah, is fake because yeah. there's black outlines around yeah, everybody because yes. it's a comp shot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yep. 
have you like i've seen pictures of it but i've never seen an aquarium where it's like 360 degrees like you're walking through a hallway and like you your ceiling is citation yeah all right it's a good good way to build a build a build a aquarium for sure Face <laughs> palm cat <laughs> Kirk, it's like, what are you doing out. in there, Kay? I think there's one in London that's just like a big long tunnel that you're completely surrounded yes. by the water. Yes. Oh, nice. I should say that. I don't um, know what it's called. I assume you... London Aquarium. <laughs> it's, um, or the London sea Fish sea Place. World. that They tend to have very understated names for everything. So. SeaWorld, I think. Does he mind meld with the whale and be like, hey, we need to bring you back to the 23rd century to yeah, save the planet? He he does mind meld with the whale, and um, I like how he says they're not your whales. Gracie's pregnant. Like, yes, they be whales. Yeah, he... And so, by the way, Spock doesn't know how to communicate. He's like, they're not the hell your whales. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's the rules of where to swear in a sentence are subtle. Yes, and also which curses to put together is very... Yes, according um, to the book. According to the book. That does endear me to Jillian a little bit, that the whales actually like <laughs> Whale approval is important. The Golden Gate Bridge as it was. But you know, like, there's a really depressing thing here. It's, it's kind of a sweet thing of the movie. But if we release the whales to the wild, she's worried that they'll be words. <laughs> they'll be poached, which is not fun. Um, but I was recently learning that uh, one, like, elephant <laughs> ranger, one ranger is killed every week in Africa because their job is to like protect the elephants <laughs> from poachers. <laughs> the hell, I can't. <laughs> He's trying. Also, I'm sure Spock has lied before. This is the usual lie about Vulcans and lying. That might actually be the most accurate part of this movie. <laughs> Animatronic whale. Given that we, they are actively attacking shipping now, that might actually be the most accurate part of it. I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, whales are smart, dude. They know what's going on. You know something else though? All this shipping that we do, it creates a lot of noise underwater and it creates yep. stress for animals. So they can all the communicate. So when Supposedly the they can communicate over long distances, but the shipping has made it impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Noise. And it, during the pandemic, when shipping went down or whatever, 30%, um, it was that much better for the sea life. The thing is, they can actually even hear airplanes moving. Arc it's like if someone is following it's like that guy on the bus was following you around with his speakers 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> yeah, it would be very anxiety inducing. But you know, I just think it's weird, like we'll regulate like how many whales and dolphins you can kill, you know, um, and we'll regulate Wait, like how much oil. That? Enterprise. Yeah. Is it? It is. Nice. That's the Enterprise. Not the actual it has Enterprise. A nuclear... It canonically it's the Enterprise. Yeah. It's probably the yeah, it's Enterprise. It's not a cameo. Yeah, it, there's they were not one of the actual Enterprise at this time. What ship is it at? I assume it's, it's like a museum ship. ship. Decommissioned. The Enterprise? Speaking uh, of Rangers, the USS active. Ranger. The this last is a thing I heard class aircraft carrier. The last thing I heard about is... the the Enterprise was that it they had to destroy it. They couldn't have it as a museum. But they so, I think one of the new I think one of the new aircraft carriers they're building is slated to be called Enterprise. Yes. Because we always have an Enterprise. Or whether you always the, have an Enterprise. Twenty six years old the ship at this time. Yes, it, it, let's make sure history remembers the name Enterprise. Yeah. So the, I, if I remember correctly, the I Enterprise... I don't understand it. it's 26 years old. 
started out as a Kitty Hawk uh, class aircraft carrier, and then it got fitted with a nuclear reactor. Um, and then let's see. My CVN um, my, sixty-five oh, yes, is planned to be scrapped. CVN eighty is the new enterprise. Yeah, CVN sixty-five is being scrapped. Yeah, so preceded by Kitty Hawk yeah. class. Big uh, E. My at my job, um, my manager, his son was in is in the Navy, and he was aboard the uh, a Nimitz class starship. Uh, starship. And then Nimitz then class got aircraft carrier. <laughs> and then he got transferred to the Gerald Ford. So everybody, because those ships have been around since Vietnam. Imagine, imagine trying to sling a Nimitz class aircraft carrier into space. <laughs> um. Yes, that, that, the fact that ship was not, in fact, the Enterprise. It was the USS Ranger. It doesn't even have a nuclear reactor. It's just a regular the, uh, carrier. So, uh, from Star Trek II, remember we had the clash between the Starfleet and the military and the civilian science program? Here, too, she's very suspicious because Spock calls him Admiral. And she's like, the military is not going to take my whales. All right, hold on. So the so the CVN sixty five was Enterprise, Five, but the four, one that three, preceded two, one, it was the CV the CV six Enterprise, and that one was the Enterprise uh, is I gonna think... be launched November twenty twenty five, but in operation twenty twenty eight. Yeah, my boss's son. Enterprise is going to be launched uh, in twenty one fifty three. <laughs> you see about the, the aircraft carrier that they're launching but um when my boss's son got transferred the sh ship is undergoing so much like fixing and stuff basically they were just <laughs> docked for like a year and a half um because they were still undergoing repairs and refits uh which is pretty nice for a sailor right because normally your life is being at sea year round but they were just marooned at shore Well, you say that, but you're, you are and you aren't at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But He's I mean, you're still in the USA, which is kind of nice. How do you guys feel about Italians? <laughs> carrier was a very, very sturdy and good ship. She took a bit, of, a lot of beating and survived. We're doomed. We're marooned. Why does Kirk look like he wants to murder her? <laughs> I think they're having a love thing because uh, here's the thing. He told everyone on the <laughs> ship, don't don't say anything about the mission. And yet he's like, I can tell I you Italian. we're not with the military. And that's... he's using his charm to like I mean, give, ever give up the whales. That's pretty minimal information, I have to say. <laughs> like, He's breaking the rules. I mean, no. Never. Military is... As long as he doesn't mention Speaking the of... future, I think he's good. Speaking of breaking the rules, <laughs> Which he is um, going to, so... Yeah. Prime directive violation over here, too. Oh, Hi, yes. How do you know they didn't invent it? Yeah. All right. I mean, isn't the Department of Temporal Investigation supposed to be on this? Thousands of miles. <laughs> Millions of miles. Yeah. Yeah. This movie's nonstop comedy. Yeah. It's good. I appreciate that the first like twenty <laughs> minutes, there's basically no comedy in it, and it's a transition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's a transition where it goes into our time and then it goes back into Starfleet afterwards. Yeah. Which is quite neat. Because, you know, the the current timeline is a joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. It starts off with Sue, the whole planet Earth her? is under threat of destruction. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not a comedy at all. <laughs> Until we land here. Sulu, isn't this a military base? How did you get here? 
<laughs> By being off screen for several scenes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's that charming. Oh boy. It's a good scene. Hello, computer. Yeah, computer. Yes. Hello, computer. This is indeed that scene. Use the keyboard. Keyboard. I saw Diet Coke in there. Is that product placement? Yeah. Did Coke pay them for this? Seems plausible. It wasn't very prominent, though. And the, the brilliant thing is, is transparent aluminium was actually invented around this time. Not in practical use in production, but this mm. whole scene is based upon the real invention of transparent al yeah. aluminium happened at the time. That's why it's called transparent aluminium, because it is what the actual product is. Mm. Or something like that. I quit I smoking. Know, I love he's wearing a button. Came up with it. But yeah, yeah. The, it's the, of the, the, of the age, yeah. Good job, Dr. Nichols. I'm proud of you. So... So this thing that they have running on the Mac is just like a looping animation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Ah, it does look like a communicator, to be fair. Hello, computer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that one of those mice with only one button? Yeah. Yeah, it's a Mac. Yes. Mac fact, this time, this is that would have been... The computer fact, is just as far oh, as everyone. That's a Mac Plus. Oh, that brings back some memories. Yeah, but the but Mac has persisted in Why having one button even until now. So. Yeah. How many buttons aluminum? do each of you have on your mouse? I have Apple eight. Mouse. I have. I have several. Yeah. One, two, three, three four, four, five, four, five seven, six, eight, seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten. That's nine. And then the up and down on the wheel. This mouse wheel click counts as one, so it's nine. Yeah. My mouse wheel clicks down and clicks hey, side to the, side. In, the UK English subtitles here. It's I saw that English. earlier, yeah. <laughs> it's aluminum, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't noticed any other UK spellings, though. Maybe there just haven't been any... They just haven't well, talked about color or on already. Was anime, or the, sorry, the original name in the notes. Oh, yeah. He's going to be a billionaire now. I'm just saying, it's inconsistent. I, I wonder how consistent it is with the rest of the subtitles. I Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the original name for aluminium was aluminium. It's just somewhere between notes to production of the, or to actual publication. It was changed to aluminium, aluminium in the UK, in the US. <laughs> it, yeah, the, it took effort for you to leave off, leave off the, <laughs> the eye, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so looking at where I downloaded the subtitles from, the little flag indicating the language is the Union Jack. I don't know if hmm. there's a okay. difference. Because they, they're all I mean, the Union Jack. That's the only, that's the only word I, I've noticed so far that, that is different from Yeah. From but most of the same is, the main thing is O's, U, and S. But if they talk about color and honor or, you know, yeah. they mobilize something, uh, I'll, I'll be sure <laughs> and notice. Fair. I mean, <laughs> just talk to Just chill. I feel like the Union Jack would be more appropriate to describe English than the American flag. So if you only had one option, but you is, would pick the Union Jack. But it's also, it is apparently specifically. She doesn't see that in the rearview so. mirror. <laughs> about it. I don't imagine most movie scripts would run into a spelling difference over the entire right. script. Like, Fun, Even, fun fact, tossing the pizza is terrible for the dough. Is it really? Uh, brother, oh, wow. Even, even the Who goes to an Italian sit-down restaurant and orders pizza? Who does this? Yeah, for, for <laughs> sure, Ryan. That's, that's a fact, for sure. This is a joke. But um, even the pickup truck she's driving is really, <laughs> um, really ridiculous Like for her to be in, into that car. A pickup truck? It was a pickup truck. Yeah, with the three seater, like pickup trucks. Seaters. You know, like that's they how they joints. built. That's how they built pickup trucks back then. They were all bench yeah, seats. Bench. They didn't have bucket seats. Hmm. If they did have a bucket, they could just pick up the whale in it and leave.
Yeah, I don't think you're going to keep tabs on them for that long, Jillian. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there surprised. Is, for some I'm reason, whale you, hunters you... in the bay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you didn't bay. plan it so that today was um, search for Spock because, you know, Spock comes back from the dead, like a certain religious figure. Yeah. Supposedly yeah. did today. We, we drew the parallel already. We beat you there. I. I think I, I posted it in whenever general Whenever somebody chat last mentions night. it's yeah. Easter, I immediately for, I I don't register Easter as a thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it draws some Easter eggs, so that's nice. Hilariously, it's a pre-Christian holiday that's even well, named that's... for a, the the pagan deity. Yeah, well, Christianity I mean... stole a few of those. Well, like I Christmas, just <laughs> like Christmas. In the pagan Saturnella. Yeah, Saturnella. Um, Harry Potter died and came back. After Spock did, so they stole the idea from Spock. Harry Potter died and came back. I, don't, eh. I mean, lots of, I mean, it's not exactly an unusual story for humans to tell. People dying and coming back. That's been a staple of storytelling for a good long time. You remember Hercules has to rescue Meg, and then the fates try to cut his... Cord of fate of uh, life. He dives into the underworld and he comes back. All right, so what? hold on. This is the best. Uh, this is the best DC. Oh. I've never seen a picture ha- in my because, life. <laughs> because, um, but uh, 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 all right. Tell them phasers on <laughs> stun does not work out. <laughs> She's so suspicious of this story. Like, is he a doctor? Mm-hmm. Is he an admiral in the military? I mean, they have diff- completely different style of communicators in these movies, and I don't like them. Are, are those the Klingon that that I, learned, I learned that doctors still have pagers because they only cost two ninety nine a month, and it's pretty cheap to give everyone one. That a dick at Spock? I mean, the NHS still uses fax machines, so, like, mm-hmm. it works. Keep using it. The NHS needs to just completely fix their I live in Iowa. Database I systems only work in outer space. Have a network database, full stop. Mm. Because they still have to physically transfer your files between trusts. Oh, I can't remember. Is this the... Uh... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. what's that John Cusack movie where he does this where he's a trade killer and he just tells everyone he's a trade killer and they think he's joking? <laughs> uh, that's from the Oblivion Dark Brotherhood mission Who Done It? <laughs> that that's pretty far away, Kirk. No, you're good. You're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, you know, like blank, blank. There we go. Sorry. So in the movie Blackface, it's the ghost point blank maneuver. Yeah. In, in the movie Enterprise, Blackfish, that's a lie. Steven, yeah. They discuss Bobby. how. Um, the the people th- their job is to find like whales to put in the uh, whale show, you know, at the Sea World, and you have to kidnap a baby whale. And they describe how like the family doesn't leave once you kidnap one of their young, and like the the hunter is the poacher, the the baby kidnapper is like crying as he tells the story mm-hmm. because like they knew what they were doing. They were basically abducting you know a family member by like uh, corralling the family into a lagoon. And then they wouldn't leave even when you'd let the nets go because they wouldn't yeah. go without the young. But anyway, so, Oof. but actually that, 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 that inspired, uh, rough. Uh, yeah. So that inspired actually, you know, all the, uh, animal aquarium institutes to stop holding. It doesn't look like a bomb. It doesn't look like a bomb at all. Yeah. <laughs> that, those tor- corridors are very, very small for such a large ship. That's, I'm pretty sure that's just Navy ships in general. No, no. It's yeah, true. It's Navy ships because uh, space is at a premium. 
a fish oh, don't yes. you get it because it's a it's a whale movie if you've ever seen um the inside of a submarine Stand that's super claustrophobic and they have they have hot bunks like they have one bunk for three sailors and every eight hours someone is getting out and someone is getting in but you know even before you get on the submarine there's a certain door that you have to fit through if you can't bend down and fit through the door and you can, and you're too fat to fit through the door you can't get on the submarine yeah that okay. makes sense you don't want to get stuck inside a submarine and then you're stuck you're blocking everybody else from getting through because you're stuck in a door that would be problematic the- there is a flaw in this story. They'd have to go back and get more because two is far from a valid population size unless you clone them. Yeah. But as we've established, time travel is actually pretty arc. easy. Yeah. So they can just go back. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Honestly, we have the genetic data of like multiple species that might go extinct. Yes. Um, so we should be all right. If this happens. Would it artificially inseminate? The, yeah, anyway, we could probably put, we how are you going to incubate the whale? You put it inside a um, elephant. You're going to turn Sea World into a big <laughs> womb. We should have this time. Should have waited a little bit longer. You know, I got to say, like, no, we're honestly, laughing Jillian, this about crazy. Just go home. Stop <laughs> interacting with the crazy man. We're laughing, but I think Jillian is doing an amazing job because she has so much empathy and compassion, and like she yes. humanizes the whale so well for us. Plus, she's funny. <laughs> she doesn't believe a word of what Kirk says, you know. <laughs> Spock, shut up! But um, she she loves those whales like her own children, you know. First, they don't actually. It, it is time travel. They do have all the time in the world. That's always the problem with time travel stories. Yeah. Except, except in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, they established that somehow there's a time, there's a clock still ticking at San Dimas. So. Well, they have put some sort of a clock on it with the the whales that don't be released, at least. Oh well, these whales, but there are more whales. Like they can find, they have all the time they need to to find any old whales and yeah, up if, until they if go extinct. This spin. crew fails. Like a different starship can just go back in time. Again, too. not a big deal. I can just go back in time to before the probe came and warn them, hey, you should send more people back in time. Look, we just keep sending back starships back, back until someone comes back with a whale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, I-, I love how the probe is not impressed with human speech. Like, don't talk to me in that, you know, stupid language. I want to talk to a civilized species where the whales. Which begs the question, why not just go back a few days with the tank installed? Oh yeah. yeah. So we don't have so enough dilithium crystals. We we only have So they would to bump into themselves. Me. So let's, let's say they get the tank installed and they go back in time a few days with the tank installed. Wouldn't they be beaming the whales out before Spock jumps in the tank to talk to them. <laughs> True. They have to wait until after that in order to avoid a paradox. But still, they, that still leaves them the interval between that moment and uh, the release in order to, to intercept them. Scotty, why are you whispering? They can optimize this timeline. They couldn't have found, like, a universe. Like, um, I was was watching a YouTube video. MIT has a nuclear reactor just because, you know, they're a big scientific institute in the country, uh, the leading probably. And so um, they couldn't have gotten it from, like, a university or something. Oh, yeah. Could have gotten to read, for that matter. It's gotten it from a bunch of hippies. Like you have a starship, you can fly to Japan, you fly to anywhere, and just go to an unguarded nuclear reactor and just steal it. 
He still tried to not gentrification. By the way, is that Christian Bale? Is that what? I don't think. No. No. Sorry. Jacob, are you just screwing with him, or do you actually think you're supposed to tell him? Well, is the trade into at least at yeah. some point it's mentioned that is the trade into only give your name and operation number? I, I think I don't remember what yeah. is mentioned, but it is at some point the print the protocol. Yeah, uh, when Picard is taken by um, chain of command in by the Cardassians. Oh no, you don't say his that only anymore. Is... Yeah. Picard, born in Labar, France. Registration number. So, this film is thereby showing us the transitionary phase between the usage of the word. What word? The Asla. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait. Yeah. Why are those guys just gonna keep walking? Like, you hear General. It's not Lama his job. Just, it's just uh, okay, just fair enough. Fair enough. enough. Actually, you said I would try to complain. They go to their quarter. They go to their stations. They aren't part of the pursuit party or anything like that. They're their own jobs. All these people don't get paid enough to deal with the fleeing <laughs> Russian. Yeah. I, I, well, the, the I, show yeah. the protocol now is get out of the way in case you need to shoot him. Down goes Chekhov. Yeah. Okay, that's more reasonable. See you Hi, Chekhov. Eh, he'll be fine. No wonder the Department of Temporal Investigations hates Kirk. One of his men just dumped future <laughs> yeah. tech in the 20th century. Oh, yeah. Kirk and that Kirk and Janeway, Janeway are there. Yeah. They're yeah, Janeway too. Uh, Janeway definitely uh, went above and beyond. And yeah. You know. Bringing back future tech in order to win a war is like, yeah. Temple investigation doesn't care if it's to our benefit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, like, but look, she blamed herself for Seven's death, and she couldn't deal with it anymore. I mean, and yeah, cool motive still violation of the temporal prime directive. Yeah, like. And all those other people who Being died on the ship, yeah, screw Kirk, them. Admiral Kirk, they took the whales. Admiral? Admiral Kirk. <laughs> the AI couldn't say Admiral? This is so messed up. I, I think the movie was a little gratuitous because it's like, Chill, you're hurting this character. Yeah, like, like he, he deserves a smack, but like, you you evacuated the whales in the middle of the night. It's so yeah, have, the the plan was going too neatly, and something has to mess it up. Yeah, to you know get the kick, third act kicking for the drama. You know? Yeah, I have a twist. I think that's why she turns to our main character. You know. Oh yeah, and also, so also the over the helicopter. edge. Did you steal this? <laughs> See, <laughs> yes. Sulu, is, we, we, we just, is Sulu is just the Sulu is the best spy out of all of them by a lot by a he mile. He told everyone yeah. directly what was going on. Yeah, who he is and things, but it's like like he's just somehow happened. in the scenes in between. He is so stealthy that he just manages to escape or get into place. He just found a Huey. <laughs> Don't worry about it. He probably he probably went to say talker or yeah. You you know what I've done a head count has happened is the person he spoke to in the helicopter is the Tormund that went to see him and he's like, hey, I know you. Let's get you out of here. Well, oh yes, very subtle guys. I guess they don't really have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they could beam it.
Oh boy. Mm. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very convincing mime work there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's like there's an invisible ship there. Wow, very convenient I, that those that, slots I right know, into place. Why, I didn't realize it, but that's why it must be why for when there's a force field they always make it do the shimmery thing, so that you don't notice it's just someone's hand stopping midair. Mm. Yeah, oh God, she's a mime. Yeah, it does look a little silly without the force fields. Is that the only time someone beams up while making a sound like that? No, that, that happened in the last movie as well. Uh, Savick just maintained a whole conversation during the beam-in. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, but she's like the stand-in for us, you know? And our love of whales. Uh, fun, 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 aluminium that that she doesn't exist. Sorry, is, Jillian. If you I look can't at a demonstration you of it, the, the illicit quantities of it are so much stronger than anything else. It takes like a tenth of the thickness to stop bullets. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Even plexiglass <laughs> itself fair, Jillian, it is, and... It's not their spaceship. It's a trash Klingon spaceship. Federation Even, starships are uh, much more optimized. <laughs> compared to the chill about his ears. I know, it's uh, just I, I guess once you're already being devoted to Oh, space, no, I remember that scene. The ears is going to be is fine. Oh, hospital scene. Yeah. Even plexiglass itself is an amazing material. No, Jillian really reminds me in appearance of the... Uh, I don't remember her name. The lady from the Neutral Zone yeah. TNG Season 1. The homemaker. When they unfreeze the three people from the 19th century or 20th century. The cryogenic time board, traveler. And yeah, you forget about the Chekhov dangling plot. So, yeah, so certainly basically just charted that helicopter with the guy he was talking to say, hey, can I have a look at this helicopter? Can I borrow it for a bit? If you make friends, people will let you do whatever you want, I guess. Yeah, I mean... That is something that spies do. Yeah. And hackers in general. Yeah. Social engineering. You know, if you just give me your banking information, I will send you all the proceeds from this stream. A brand new kidney. <laughs> Which way is this turning to... <laughs> Here's 20 bucks. I'll be back in an hour. Uh -huh. Jim, they're gonna cut into him. Like barbarians. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not paid enough to care about this. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but she immediately knew what they were planning on doing with the the journey. Well, as they're trying their best, they've only got so much to work with. <laughs> Kind of like how they talk about how the, it's barbaric, but it's, like, it's just chase. what we can use and what we have as best today. We are trying our best to an extent. Um, it's good that they're job. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, even when you think about like, uh, like chemo is just putting very deadly radiation. And you can't help but kill good cells. That's, you know, it's, it's very debilitating also. But like you said, we're trying the best we can.
My God, man. Oh, he would tell me. There we go. Another British spelling. <laughs> it's some I don't know what it is exactly. It doesn't even honestly look like a Klingon phaser. It might just be the communicator or something, right? Like No, that, no, is, that is actually it's a phaser. Both. It's just oh, it's a phaser, okay. It's, it's, well, it's a Kling, yeah, it's a Klingon phaser then, right? Yeah. Working with bone knives and bear skins. What is a fundoscopic examination? Oh, sure. It's where they the stick a tube down barbaric. something. It's either it's down your throat have. or up your rectum. It's one or the other. Mm. Uh, so they were, they were on a Klingon that. ship. Rectum is endoscopic, right? They were on a Klingon ship. Where did he get this Federation device? They were on a Federation world. So you're saying that they got a bunch of medical supplies before they left? Yes. So, fundoscopic examination sense. is a review of your retina, so they just look at your eye. Oh. Hmm. Oh, but he Admiral. was comatose, so that makes sense. Yeah, close enough. Admiral, it's fine. <laughs> You're not going to raise the alarm, Titan. Soon we'll be able to genetically uh, engineer virus. Uh, <laughs> whimsical music. To attack tumors and stuff. And it, we're, yeah, we're back in full comedy mode. Yep. And the chemotherapy is actually barbaric, it's, but it's the best thing we have for some tasters. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Pavel? Is that the um, only time Kirk calls him Pavel? Might be. Yeah, I think so. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Full on druid of kidney. Fully functional. Uh, it's great. And look, that's a prime directive violation, although it's probably the best comedy moment of any Star Trek. Uh, it's all, uh, it's kind of fulfillment, though. It's, yeah, it's a causality I mean, loop that already happens, right? All right. Well, well, she goes to, on to be funny... critical to the founding of the Federation. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, by the way, the doctors are like flipping through all their charts. They're not believing their eyes and ears. Why didn't they beam directly into the ship? Why did they beam into the park? And now they have to climb into the ship. Because we, we didn't want Alice here. Yeah. Dang it. Though, why did they just close the door? Now they have to beam Kirk in. So, uh, Ryan, would you uh, go with Kirk or would and the whales, or would you stay in the twenty fourth, twenty first century? I mean, if the twenty first century the... kind of sucks. So, the closest he ever enough. gets to it, you'd say I don't have anyone yeah. here. You could go. I mean, this does seem weird, right? Like they're always, they always seem pretty specific about beaming up particular people with particular signatures and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like we we know not to beam up the Vulcan ambassador. Like four to beam up, they they yeah. don't have any disambiguity there. Look, you know? we should just yeah. be glad that they didn't get too vixed on their way up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have that. That could flower. have gone so much worse. That would have been comedy gold. By the way, they were supposed to have Eddie Murphy in this movie, but I think we had enough. It is I don't nice think that she's not another more. Edith mm. who has to die for the story to be? happen. Edith Keeler. Yeah, we didn't even have to kill her. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we could, though. We could still kill her. The outfit consistency. That couldn't have been hard to really just good. scan all the, all the frequencies. Like, yeah. Because they established at the start of the film, you cannot change their outfits. So they consistently keep the same outfits throughout, and it is actually really well done. Uh, he's got that. He's got a different outfit on. He had a red jacket. It's a black jacket. He didn't have a thing inside of his inside of that leather patch. And then he's got something in there now. Whatever that is. Everyone else is consistent. 
oh, here's the Ryu shot from, oh, what well, was it Star Trek 2? Flight of the Navigator. <laughs> Yep, as you do. Of course, Spock. Makes sense. And they're the outfits from when they stole the Enterprise. Thank God Chekhov changed his outfit after they escaped space dock. These people pretty much... They probably all smell, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound great. <laughs> McCoy's enjoying this moment greatly. They were on yeah. Vulcan and they were saying how the ship smells like Klingons. What well, they've had some chance to spray like? some Febreze around. It's a nice earthy peaty aroma. <laughs> yeah. with a touch of lilac. Contact with the whales? Alright. Jillian, you're on a spaceship, lady. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a good question. Like, what, where's that camera? I doubt they smell worse than the inside of a Klingon bird of prey. <laughs> they got uh, a nice wash on Vulcan. Whales, Mrs. Scott. Whales. The reason nautical miles or like it was measured, nautical distance was measured in knots was because they had like a rope and it would, you would count how fast the, the knot in the rope would slip between your fingers. And that's why we call it knots. Yeah, save the whales, do it. Also, I haven't yeah, really so been counting breach. Have they breached at all, actually, this movie? They've just been like no. servicing briefly oh, yeah. to, to get some the air. They haven't jumped. I the didn't know that about not. Once. Thank you. When you mentioned it was animatronic. We have bad guys in this film for the first time. They're the po whale poachers. And yep. what do you know? It's the Russians. <laughs> So what what was that footage of the whales? Were those CG whales? What was I looking at? I don't know. That wouldn't have been CG. Is that true they're Russian? I think they're Russian. Because they, they say something to each other that's not English. And they're in the Bering Strait. Yeah, Bering Sea. Oh, yeah. That seems likely. Yeah, those are animatronic whales. It's only near the end that real whales are used. But like the the full the full thought whale is right an animatronic, right? Isn't it just like the the back spout? Or is that an, is that a full animatronic? All right, it's a good animatronic. It's a good whale. It is. Nope. <laughs> Full <laughs> animatronic. It's on the DVD. <laughs> That's a great shot. And the director's series videotape. <laughs> yep, they're gonna get out of there eventually, for sure. Also, I like how they're not actually <laughs> turning in that in that shot with the wheel. Hmm. They're only turning in the wide shot. That's a great shot of the bird of prey model, but uh, this is like the fourth prime directive violation of this movie. <laughs> Not Porto and all. How much weight can this ship hold? Enough. Everybody will think they're crazy. 
Yeah. Why does transporter affect no, that? That's a great These line. Two worlds don't actually fit inside the ship. Admiral. <laughs> Seriously, how big is this bird of prey? Whales are. Whales are sizable creatures. And they did actually deliberately size up the ship for the film, I think. They can absolutely give exact figures. They use the transporter. They sh they should know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, but then you have to translate the numbers the from space Klingon. shuttle could fit it's two whales. Thing, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a whole thing. Yeah, they have Uhura who speaks every language. <laughs> Don't worry about right. that. Wait, hang on. Yeah, she's kind of she's, she's Klingon. They they go out. They go on, They've gone out of the out of their way to say that she's a linguistic genius that can learn a new language on the spot, like oh, Hoshi. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, but numbers in, are hard, man. Numbers are weird. Star Trek Five or Six, <laughs> they had that bit where they have to like, like talk their way past sixty twelve and Klingon. like. Oh yeah, that was great. And Uhura's like reading right. from the dictionary, the Klingon dictionary. No, no, that scene makes no sense. It's too good though. <laughs> Okay, right. And also, the uh, weight of water is not difficult to calculate, especially if you're using the metric system. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's, also but it's not, it's, it's salt water. It's different. That's it's heavier. Hard. So, yeah, if it was pure water, pure water, then it's one kilogram per liter. Okay, but sure, how it many liters be is it? Because how much volume is whale and how much volume is But volume? you you used you used the transporter. The transporter would know yeah, every particle yeah, that's yeah, in there. Yeah. You know the mole. <laughs> Knows every particle and what it is, so it should know exactly how much mass there is. If you speak Klingon. <sighs> yeah, okay. Which apparently they know they speak well enough to operate the transporter. Right, exactly. Well, whatever, it's fine. It's chill. Don't worry about it. Admiral, there'll be whales here. <laughs> Maybe the whales did the time travel calculations. Yeah, probably, probably. But you know, also the thing is though, the movie is a joke. So uh, Spock hates doing wow. estimates or the Enterprise guesses. sure took a long time leaving Earth's atmosphere <laughs> yes, no, at warp three. So here's well, yeah, what yeah, happens in the story. Yes, because, because it's funny. All that extra mass. Buy your apart, Sulu. Yeah. As of this movie, Warp 10 is just a really fast speed, right? There isn't anything special about it. So, if you go left around the sun, you go back in time. <laughs> if you go right yeah. around the sun, you go forward in time. Righty, tighty, lefty, Lucy. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Good, good to <laughs> good to establish. What if what if you what if you go instead of going uh, around the equator? What if you go around like the the longitudinally? You know, like orbitally oh, yeah. instead of and what happens? Do you, do you, instead of going instead of going forward and back in time, do you go like to a different dimension? Do you like go? Exactly. Do you yeah. go into like the fourth fourth spatial dimension? <laughs> you race oh, to a higher you know, plane. Or you go, you, you go go into like. Either the mirror universe or maybe the you know the Picard. The no, other no, 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 If you go, tactic all the if you time, go, what's stopping them? If you go that's one way, gripe. if you go one way around yeah. longitudinally, you go up uh, a spatial dimension, so you go into four spatial dimensions. If what you go the other that? way, you go you go down a spatial dimension, so you, you go, go down in two D. So the, so it's like an animated series. You go down. Oh, <laughs> you're in the oh, animated series. There we go. Uh, I think it only cares if you go clockwise or counterclockwise. It's all relative. Time is linear. It's not linear. <laughs> Come on, maybe we have a whole episode cyclical. about this. It's not linear. Hmm. 
Dude, How would the water be coming in water. so yeah so soon? No, that's the that's just the coolant. Yeah, also that's this, coolant. something about that. Why shot, is the coolant lines really in the look. bridge? <laughs> the ship is made yeah, of steam. The, 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 the ceiling is rocks, right? It all, that's it's why all, clocks are it's all one design. The ceiling racks. Yeah. Robo was talking about uh, a few weeks ago how they dug up the Paramount parking lot to find an old to make this. Golden Gate yeah. Bridge yeah. was really the marketing Just shot of this scene. film. It's yeah, featured this, on this almost all of the a... posters and screenshots. Yeah, they put this used to money. be a parking lot, and they dug it out to to turn it into a pool again. It was a pool, then they filled it in to be a parking lot, yeah. and then they. Like, there's a really amazing Russell Crowe movie called Master and Commander from the year 2000. Yeah. And, it, and it came out the same year as Lord the of the Rings. Is so that outside the hatch? <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't get as much acclaim. But, like, you know, um, to film the ship being at sea, um, they made the ship be at crew. Like, you know, when they were docked in the, in the pool for uh, a couple of weeks. And then they actually took it to sea. Um, but it's really hard filming on a uh, you know water set. Expensive too. Also, James Cameron filmed filmed the film called The Abyss, and um, the danger was because he had so many shots underwater that everybody would be electrocuted. So the first electrician they hired for the film said, "You're going to kill everybody," and the second one said, "We could make it work," and they just hired the second. Yeah. One. <laughs> But there's a very real f danger of electrocution when you have underwater shots. Yeah. That makes sense. Water being a very good conductor of electricity. Well, the impurities in the water are being good at it. Yeah. It's impossible to... Well, it would be very, very difficult to have pure water on, of this scale on a set as well. We did it. We saved the whales. Okay, we're good. Kirk can die, whatever, who cares? But the whales are going to be saved. <laughs> How is this bird of prey still floating? Well, it's a spaceship, so you assume it's airtight. At least parts Not of it are. Not airtight anymore. <laughs> well, I, I assume there's enough components of it that it's Scully still airtight to that are hatch. able to... Yeah. Where are the whales? More importantly, Why don't they sing? how does its cloaking device re-engage? Breach? No. Okay. Is Pox it's smiling? Animatronic. They can't do it. <laughs> Can't do that. That's illegal. So Nimoy directed Is this and the prior movie. I didn't realize that. And then Shatner directs the next movie. And now the probe talks to some civilized beings. <laughs> Up, oh, yeah, vertical whales, as you do, very important. <laughs> whales famously can only sing while vertical. <laughs> Thanks, that's my band name now. Vertical whale. Ah. Uh, maybe their tails look like that because they're like antennas. <laughs> Salt water probably messed with the system. Geordie will fix it in that... 100 years' time. <laughs> Could be the way that in canon that I actually able to communicate with space rather than anything else. Getting a little two thousand one on us here. Yeah. <laughs> Breach count. Breach count is zero. They haven't. Bre I'm, we've seen them like flip their tails, but I'm looking for a full jump. 
I need a whale to jump out of the water. That'd be very, very difficult for an animatronic to do. We should have counted prime directive violations. Yeah. It's this whole True. movie. Yeah. It's actually the temporal prime directive. Man, there's gotta be at least one bit of stock footage they could use to have a whale jump. Possibly. Although, if you mess with pre-world Picky. Warm Earth, I guess that technically violates both prime directives. <laughs> True. The book Moby Dick describes how horrifying a they whale hunt stock is. footage when all is clear. The creature, like, tries to pull you under, and, um... It, um... It's, you know, fair play. It's a, very, it's a very bloody affair. There's a lot of blood everywhere, because it's such a big creature. If you're gonna stab it, it, it gets the right to smash On the plus you. side, it zero away team deaths. True. Yep. I wow. imagine they're, they've got to have a whale hurt. jump right at the end for a celebration thing. Would you say it's a negative oh. one, since the doctor saved the life of that woman? <laughs> she wasn't on the away team. <laughs> That's true. But they came back with an extra crew member. True. <laughs> <laughs> And only on, one Gracie, phase of I know fire, you want to do and it. it was to fuse the lock. Only the Klingon bird of prey. Well, the bird of prey ends up in the fleet museum, so... So it's yeah, right. nice, so, uh, it's still someone, floating. Someone, yeah. It out eventually. Yeah, I, can grab something I, that I assume, yeah. The space well, cylinder leaves. Yay! Uh, it took what forever to find the bird of prey. We couldn't find the bird of prey for a while. Just... It was cooked. <laughs> Come on, do it. Yes, one. Hey. We've but two whales it. isn't enough to sustain a population. No, two. I've already said this. It's not. And it you'd comes need, back you'd need for like, the lower You'd need like 90. They can get more whales. Oh, we're just going to... Pull you into the ocean. We, they would be absolutely fun. frozen right now. This, they, you would not really want to be splashing around like that. Cloaking only <laughs> affects light. Being underwater is physical. Doesn't make sense. They couldn't find it underwater. All right, we don't need the whales anymore. <laughs> Looks like free oil yeah, to me. Let's just take them out fast and shoot them. The studio wanted hey. like a feel-good family movie, so we got a lot of sure. like. Oh, look, there's the cats. The the Japanese uh, representative wants to eat them. Yep. No. The Dorian. Oh yes. And we get a court martial. If you didn't like court martials, you're gonna like them now. <laughs> There are cats in the animated series, Emress. Uh. Larry Niven now wrote that episode. Now all the whales in the future are inbred. Is Spock accused? <laughs> oh, Spock and this is the only shot with McCoy, all the TOS characters, including Rand and Chapel. By the ghost. It's a beautiful um, shot, too, by the way, because... The set is amazing. And Spock is standing with his friends and even Sarek. Oh is. Um, because remember, at the beginning, his mother explains to him that uh, the needs of the one outrank the needs of the many. That's why your yeah, friends uh, give up their careers to save you. I mean, the destroying, the willful destruction of Federation property is a bit of a... Titans and the Klingon equivalent in really Star Trek Online as well. Kurt literally followed pe Federation policy on that. In the event yeah. attacked by the enemy, you blow it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they're trumping up the charges, though. But you're right. You're totally right. I mean, because it's you're right. He did it to avoid it from being falling into enemy hands. But I think it's also the the whole um,
Oh, well, I think no. he does. Is that going to be my request anyway? God, is the Klingon the Klingon lawyer ambassador here? <laughs> It'd be so bad. It'd be so yeah, bad. That's true. Okay, so those those weren't monkey aliens. They're weird tech aliens. Oh, jeez, that one's creepy. They're like, mon They're like monkey breen. Yeah. Uh, oh, great. I'm, 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 I'm really glad Next Generation didn't have the, as this uh, much budget for their aliens. It didn't. The entire film was to get them off with no, without charges. Well, we, we got the dinosaur in the back, too. Um, Dinosaurs are cool, but I don't yeah. want the big head doll one. Yeah, this is no. I'm glad TNG has the, you know, better Klingons, but. What do you think happened in the mirror universe when I, it comes I, to the probe and the whales? I can do without. They just I'm commissioned her? Saying... Don't worry about that. Mirror <laughs> universe probably would have just yeah, blown it up or at least tried. She's, she's been here for like a week. Look, we don't have any resident whale experts in our century because we hunted them all to extinction. Yeah. Remember? She is the leading expert, expert on whales. <laughs> <laughs> and she has no never thing. heard from a dem. <laughs> if you want to find Will Captain Kirk, just follow the path of destruction. Um, she's I cute, thought to though. myself, you know, I must really see Jean-Luc, so I simply sought out the nearest explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? So you. Um, Sarek is a good dad. Is he? Civilian contractor. Well, Don't he comes like around 360. Other? He comes around 360. Yeah, when he's and dying. Then they get to... <laughs> yeah, and then they yeah. fall apart again in TNG. So they are they are closer in TNG than they are in TOS. I feel like this is the closest he'll ever get to say I'm I'm proud of you, son. Spock, it's a shame yeah. your sister wasn't here to see this. <laughs> Call back. You are. I like how um, what was it? Two thousand nine Star Trek. Ooh, they had the uh, big, file. they had a uh, younger Spock do the whole computer Fine. thing as well. Fine has various yeah. definitions. Yeah, True. but well, um, I don't think he's talking about how attractive he thinks he is. <laughs> Feel fine. That's a good one. It's a snazzy new outfit he's got I on. I want to but... Photoshop Burnham in a TOS uniform. <laughs> Movie uniform. Oh, oh, this is going to be a good shot. Excelsior. And of course, Sulu does get There's the Excelsior. Right, Excelsior. Good for yeah, him. The, the most beautiful ship. Right, then we pan over it. Other than the NX-01. My favorite is the Enterprise E. Then an NX-01 I, fit. I won't begrudge you for liking the NX-01. I don't think it's ugly, but I think Excelsior is number one, and then Sovereign, and then Galaxy. I like I like the Constitution model too. I like the Studio model. It's a very beautiful model. Yeah. The Enterprise A is the Constellation class, or is this still called Constitution? Constitution. Constellation has four nacelles, and it has a really thick saucer with all the yeah. shuttle bays. It's a Constitution. Yeah. It's Constitution refit, basically. I like how the new Constitutions think... have pylons that aren't toothpicks. Right. That's Enterprise nice. F is nice too. Are these credit sequences? Oh man. Yeah. 
Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, chat. How come Lieutenant uh, Savick's the only person who gets her rank in there? <laughs> come on, the rank. the defiant. On, oh, we got Brock. We got Brock Peters for Admiral um, Cartwright. Again. One shuffle is not in it very much, but she is there. In turn one, in turn two. Oh, gun boss. Yeah, we're going to get some more Brock in a couple weeks. Uh, he's not yep. a very nice man. Which is quite interesting, because he is nice in this film, but then he, is he? has a change of feelings. In this film, all he does is freak out about the whale probe and like try to get it to stop. Yeah, when it's a tsunami outside. I mean, he's nice about Kirk. He doesn't question Kirk. He just follows what Kirk wants to do. Oh yeah. Um, so that's that's the whale movie. It's I still maintain it is the best Star Trek movie. Uh, it, it is very very good. It's great. And then what's next? Next week is the one with God, where we ask him for his oh, ID. Boy. We get oh Cyborg, who is a character from <laughs> Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Yeah. Which we haven't yet seen, so we need to hopefully have that coming soon. Yeah. What does God be... need with a starship? He... Yeah. Don't let ask God Almighty for his ID, yeah. Jim. God just wants we, to we find We're going to have style. some fun laughing at it, basically. I like Cyborg. Cyborg, Cyborg is a good element to the film. The premise of the film, and certainly the final act of the film, is a bit no. weird. And then the week after that, we will have uh, Kirk is going to murder the Klingon Chancellor. Yep. And then we finally have Jelly. And we get, and we, and we meet Worf's grandfather. So, if you're a big fan of Captain Kirk being sent to Rurapente. I recommend the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie. Yes. Yeah. It the is movie. basically the same thing. Or that Strange New Worlds episode. Which one? The oh. one where they lose their memories. Yeah, the memory one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're done. This movie's over. The stream is over. Wait, one last thing. Mark, we just finished the movie. Give me your closing thoughts. <laughs> we barely use Mark anymore. Because you've got the audience now. Yeah. By yeah. Jove, a yarn for the ages this voyage what? home. A space age odyssey replete with humpback leviathan. Thanks for the stream. Quite an agglomeration of fantasy and fact, I declare. I declare. I declare this stream to be over. And have a lovely weekend. I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> you some fun Future man, we don't even have money. What do you mean bankruptcy? <laughs>